Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Christy Caminale and I am a faculty member in the College of Business, the accounting program. I welcome you to Admitted Students Day. First, let me start by congratulating you. Congratulating you on being accepted to one of the most premier universities in the country. I am excited to be a part of this university and I have been for over seven years. Um, I grew up right here on Long Island. I grew up in Islip and I went away to school for my undergraduate degree in accounting, went on for my MBA in accounting, and then for my PhD in accounting. Yes, they do offer doctoral programs in accounting. Prior to my PhD, I worked for several years as an auditor with PricewaterhouseCoopers, and I have never looked back from gaining a career in accounting. Today, my purpose is to share with you a little bit about accounting, a little bit about our program at, at Stony Brook University and why you may wanna choose accounting as your degree. I always tell my students, and I teach at the undergraduate level and the graduate level, I teach principles of accounting, which is your first introduction to accounting. So if you are a business major, all business majors take this course. I also teach intermediate one accounting and intermediate two accounting at the undergraduate level as well. And I teach at the graduate level advanced accounting. And every single time that I start this class, whether it's at the graduate level or the undergraduate level, I always start with accounting is the language of all business. So whether you are going to be accountant or not, your life will be touched by accounting. So what is accounting? Accounting is a systematic and detailed recording of financial transactions of the business. We measure, we process, and we communicate very important information, financial and non-financial information about an entity. To whom? To interested parties, investors, creditors, suppliers, management, regulators. So whether you're going to fit into one of these categories or whether you are going to be actually in the business of accounting, you will be, a you will be touched by accounting. And I always tell my students, once you learn accounting as the foundation, you can go into any of the various fields of business. Whether you wanna own your own dance studio one day or your own barber shop, you will be touched by accounting. Your records will be recorded and measured and analyzed in the language of business, accounting. That's how we measure our transactions. That's how we measure our processes. So accounting is vital to the business world. It's vital to the world around us. And so I'm excited to be a part of this and I hope you're going to join me on your journey. What are some of the careers in accounting? Well, there are many, okay? There are many careers in accounting. What most people think of when they think of accounting, they think of the public accountant. These are individuals who assist corporations with a variety of transactions, whether it is reviewing their, whether it's, I'm sorry, whether it's computing and filing taxes, whether it's reviewing financial records to make sure they're in compliance with accounting standards, or whether they are simply there to offer guidance to the corporation or the entity, general accounting guidance. These people are responsible for understanding the nature of the client, the needs of the client, and how to make that client more efficient and more effective. The focus of the public accountant is to external groups like the banks, the board of directors, the stockholders, taxing authorities, all, all related to a company's financial health and status. The management accountant is internal to a business. These accountants assist and inform individuals at the leadership level about financial decisions related to the company's operations. So they work within companies to monitor costs, sales, spending and budgets. They identify past trends and predict future needs. These people work with the leaders of the company to make that company more efficient and more effective. The internal auditor are also internal to the organization. They collect and analyze data about a company's internal controls. What are internal controls? These are controls and processes that are put in place to safeguard assets, increase efficiency, and help stop fraudulent behavior. In other words, the internal auditor is put in place to make sure that employees are not stealing assets, they're not committing fraud, and that all the rules and regulations internal to the organization are being followed. The government auditor is someone, the government accountant is someone who comes in as a public servant. They manage, manage budgets and expenses and revenues at the federal, state, and local levels of an organization. So, for example, military, law enforcement, public schools, they have very good job security 
as being one of their primary benefits. So these people help with the federal, state, and local level of organizations. The forensic accountant, they're the investigative auditor. They are professionals employed if there is a dispute or impending litigation for things like insurance claims and personal injury suits or divorce or breach of contract. These people are getting to the nitty gritty, for example, of some people's personal divorce proceedings. Um, or they can be involved in accidents and any type of behavior related to fraud as well. So there's a variety of careers in accounting, including education. You can get a PhD in accounting. So there are many different avenues that you can, that you can pursue in accounting, and there are many different reasons why you should, pros and cons. I think that, I know that, accounting is one of the few degrees you come out with a, with a clear career path, as I just indicated. You come out with a trade, you come out with a knowledge, you come out with a clear path of where you want, where, where you are going um, for your career. It's a stable and growing field. There will always be a need for accountants. There is a, a ton of professional growth inside the accounting world and favor, in the favorable earnings as well. There's a lot of flexibility. There are there's flexibility in terms of work-life balance, which I know a lot of you are interested in. There's opportunities to work from home or on flexible schedules, as well as entrepreneurial potential. One of my, my dearest friends from where I went to school, Loyola University, she spent five or six years with public accounting in the big four accounting firms, and now she works from home in her jeans and helps clients with the tax returns. The cons. There is a little bit more education involved in accounting, and I'll get to that in a minute, 150 credit hours. Some people view the work as dull or stressful, and there is a busy season. I'm sure you've heard about that. So there are cons, like, like anything else you would imagine. There, is, there are pros and cons to a career in accounting. However, in my opinion, the pros far outweigh the cons. Why would you come to Stony Brook University? Just, just, may, let's assume that you decide to pursue a degree in accounting. Why would you come here? Well, outstanding curriculum, our CPA exam pass rate, and how involved the accounting profession is and the students are with our university. Undergraduate level. So first you need to know that in order to be a CPA, which is a certified public accountant, and you may have heard that term before. So a certified public accountant, if we go back to our areas of careers where it's public accounting, these are individuals who have to pass a certified exam and have to have a certain level of experience in accounting to be considered a certified public accountant. So you can be an accountant, but a CPA now stands for a license that you put after your name to indicate your level of education, your, your level of experience, and your letter, level of ethical value. And so what you need to do to become a CPA, which most accountants decide to pursue, and not all, but you need 120 hours to sit for the CPA exam, which is your standard four-year program. However, in addition to that, you need another 30 credits beyond the undergraduate degree, meaning a master's degree, to be certified in New York State, okay? As well as most of the 48, I think it's 48 other um, states as well. And each year that changes. But decide you, say you wanna go to Connecticut or New Jersey, they too have the 150 education requirements. So how do you get there? You get there by, if you come to Stony Brook University, you start with the accounting minor. The accounting minor is 24 credits. You need to have a 3.2 or higher GPA to be admitted into that minor. It can be declared at any time in your major. So if you're a business major, you can minor in accounting. If you are an economics major, you can minor in accounting. A music major, minor in accounting. So you can declare it with any minor, with any major. Um, and once you have that minor, you can move on to graduate work. Now, what is the graduate work? It says on here, can combine with fast track. We'll get back to that in a second. But here's your graduate work. Let's say you come through and you minor in accounting and you want the 150 hours because you want to become a certified public accountant. The first thing you need to know is now, having gone through the minor, you now are eligible to, be, um, to apply for the graduate program. You have two options here, an MS in accounting or an MBA in accounting. The MS in accounting is for students who have majored in business with 30 credits and have completed the minor. And then you go on to take 10 classes in accounting within one year. And those courses include advanced accounting, government not-for-profit accounting, 
uh, forensic accounting, accounting information systems, for example, advanced auditing. So all really, really meat and bones of accounting. Well, let's say you didn't major in accounting. Let's say you majored in um, economics and you still wanted to pursue your CPA license. Well, you can go through this MBA program and all you would need is 18 credits of prerequisite accounting work. You could have included the minor or you could have taken six courses in accounting. You come out with now the requirements to sit for and be certified in New York State for the CPA exam and for to be noted as a CPA. Going back here, fast track program. These are for students who, who would like to major in economics, for example, or uh, applied math, any degree outside of business. You start your graduate work a little bit earlier. You start that in your fourth year. So within five years, you're out of our program with an undergraduate degree and an MBA in accounting, having had a degree other than business. And these are for students who have a 3.2 or higher GPA. These are our students who wish to um, broaden their knowledge base outside of business with a degree out other than business. Why would you choose Stony Brook University? Well, um, a recent report, NASBA report, indicated that Stony Brook University first-time test takers with an advanced degree had a 60.9% pass rate. Seems kind of low. Well, it, it's the CPA exam is determined to be one of the hardest exams you will ever take. The, the rate, um, no other university on Long Island has more than a 42.2% pass rate. Okay, so we are clearly higher than our competitors. In the category of all test takers with an advanced degree, SBU, Stony Brook, has a 56.4 pass rate. The highest for any other Long, Long Island University is in this category is 45.8. So again, we're looking at Stony Brook University coming out of our program with a premier education that will suit you to sit for and pass the CPA at a significantly higher level than other universities on Long Island. In addition to our curriculum and our outstanding pass rate for the CPA exam, we do a lot at Stony Brook University to encourage you to get involved with our student body, specifically in accounting, as well as with the profession. I, re I will always remember an accounting a meeting that I had gone to several years ago and I was speaking with a partner from Deloitte and he indicated to me that if the first time I meet a student is on an interview, I know something is wrong. And he, what, was he, what he was suggesting was he expects to meet these students during their four-year program, earlier in their program, so that he can get to know these students um, well before they actually sit for a formal interview. So what this what we did in 2014 and i founded this with um students of, of, of the 2013 2014 class we have found an accounting society the stony brook university accounting society is a nonprofit student-run organization for those interested in the accounting discipline we provide opportunities for the development of technical and professional skills to complement university education participation in community service and interaction among students faculty and professionals I said a lot there. Basically what this society is, is a liaison between our student body and the profession. And what we do is we hold weekly meetings to interact with the profession. Now, here's an example of, here's a list of the events we had in fall. So as you can see, we start early right away in September and go all the way through December with the bulk of our meetings being held the first two months. And the reason why the meetings are held the first two months is because that is the season for accounting recruitment. So accounting firms come to our campus to meet with our students, to present to them various topics like resume writing, interview workshop, mock interview, um, how do you choose the right firm, what do you expect your first year, how do you brand yourself, um, et cetera. And these firms come, and you can see the list of speakers, to speak with our students to not only provide information about the accounting profession, but to assist our students with the skills necessary to achieve um, what, they were, what they're looking to do, and that is to excel in the accounting world. And what they do in the meantime is they get to meet our students prior to the actual formal interview. 
our biggest um, event is, on Oct is in October, and that was October 3rd last year, which is our seventh annual accounting networking breakfast, where we had over 20 accounting firms come in, like a job fair, to speak with our students, to collect resumes, to really get the ball rolling. And this is basically, you know, your 10 minute um, quick job interview that you would meet with these firms and they'll call you back if they're interested. Um, and then in the spring, things quiet down just a little bit. And this was originally our spring schedule, but because of the coronavirus, um, we had to scale back just a little bit. But in the spring, we focus on our, um, our career center. And that is our career center really puts together a phenomenal um, program for our students. Um, they, they hold networking events, they hold job fairs, et cetera. Um, in addition, we work with the Institute of Management Accountants, which is an organization that we have a student chapter right on campus. Um, and this, this chapter, what we do, it, it joins forces with our accounting society. So our accounting society meetings are open to our Institute of Management accountant members or student members. And what we do is with the IMA is we focus on the area of management accounting. And remember what the area of management accounting is. Those are people individual inside an organization that help with budgeting and sales and forecasting, et cetera. So we have a nice um, relationship with the IMA um, such that we do have a chapter of the Institute of Management Accountants right here at Stony Brook. And we have speakers coming in from that organization as well as that organization sponsors our students to attend monthly meetings. Um, it is their dinner workshops to where our students can go for free for a nice dinner and network with everyone from public accounting to private accounting to government accounting, et cetera. Here is a list of the student, the, the firms, I'm sorry, that have joined um, us, whether it was in a presentation to the Accounting Society, was whether it was a job fair, um, whether it was our annual networking breakfast. So every firm you could imagine, whether it's the big four accounting firms, whether it's the regional firms, whether it's the local firms, the FBI, et cetera, they have all been here to work with our students um, to get to know our students, to interview our students, and to recruit our students. And at the end of the day, the bottom line is we have students coming in to my, I have students coming into my office with multiple job offers and needing to make a decision about where they would like to spend, whether it's an internship or whether it's full-time employment. So I guess the end result is what I want to say to you today is there, there are a lot of opportunities in accounting. Um, there are a lot of opportunities at Stony Brook University. And I think if you avail yourself of the information that's out there about an accounting degree, about careers in accounting, and imp most importantly, what the university, what any university can do with you as far as aligning you with the need, your needs, and those of the profession. This will make you ultimately very successful because now you have a plan, you have a career, you have a career path, you have an education to get there, and you have involvement with the profession early on in your, in your educational, craft, um, educational path. So again, welcome to Stony Brook University. I am excited to meet you in the fall. Um, hopefully I will see you in my Principles of Accounting class or in my Intermediate or Advanced Accounting class someday. Welcome and good luck.